side I'm going to leave the silver and then I'm going to take a very thin piece of pinstripe some of this 1 16th uh, fine line tape 1 16th thick which is kind of thick on the car but it's thin tape and I'm going to just do kind of a pinstripe arc arcing down through the side of the body like that and then of course it's got this trim that's going to be bare metal foiled below that trim down to my pinstripe is going to be blue okay and then it'll be my silver pinstripe and then below that will be will be black so it'll be kind of a an arcing blue and black line going through or color and then with a with a silver stripe going through the middle of that kind of on an arc at least that's the plan and then just to tie it all together I'm going to paint the hood scoop black as well so that'll kind of tie and then the blue interior with the blue and black so that's my plan and what I did is I laid that with a pencil I laid a line out on each side I used a piece of um, some of this hard this cardstock paper and I just freehanded an arc with my knife just a smooth arc that, that, that I thought it was about right cut that out, cut the piece out, and I cut it to where the top edge of the paper would line up with that trim. And then I just took some of this double-sided tape that's real uh, low tack and tacked my template on there. And then I drew my line. And then I just peeled it off, put my tape on the other side of the, of the template, flipped it over, taped it down, made my pencil line on this side so both sides match up with the, and have that arc on it and everything. So there's a real light pencil line here. It probably doesn't show up on the camera. I can barely see it from here, but there's a light pencil line right there, and I'm going to tape, put my um, pinstripe and tape right below the line so when I paint, it'll cover that pencil, pencil mark on there. But before I do any of that, or even think about doing it, I, um, I made a template or a, a test piece. I just took a piece of that sign material and I took some of that from my fine line, my real thin fine line tape, and I just laid a piece kind of on an arc on it and burnished it down really good. This piece has been painted with the diamond dust just like the car. And uh, so I laid my piece of fine line tape on there and then I masked off over the top of it with the, uh, the wide Tamiya tape, the 40 millimeter I think it is. Masked over the, the tape. And then I went back with my knife and cut down the middle of the pinstripe tape on top of it. I didn't even, actually I didn't cut it. I actually just more or less just kind of scored it carefully over the middle of the tape there. So I've got my nice edge from my pinstripe and then the rest is masked off. Um, then I'll spray whichever color, blue or black, whichever one, doesn't matter. I'm going to try, this will be a first for me, going with the Model Master paints over the, uh, the one coat lacquer. So, these are acrylic. So, uh, we'll see how it reacts. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to touch the car until I know this is all going to work. I'm going to paint, I'm going to seal with, uh, you know, between colors, seal it off to to keep peel up and bleed through, which I don't think is going to be a big issue, but I'm going to put very light coats anyway of just regular old Krylon clear, just dustings of that to protect um, the colors as I'm masking, you know, over the top of them. I mean, I don't want to mask right over the top of the acrylic on top of this. That's be it for sure, probably peel up, you know, so that's why I'm going to do this piece first and kind of mimic what I'm going to do on the car. And if that all goes successfully, there's no reactions and, and all that kind of stuff, and it looks like it works pretty good, then I'll tape half of this piece off because I got a couple different clear coats I want to try. Uh, I'm gonna on one side I'm gonna try the uh, the testers clear or super clear or whatever they call it for the for this paint, and then on the other side I'm not sure what clear I'm gonna try on that, but I'm gonna again that'll make sure there's no reaction with the acrylics and then, you know, some of the Krylon on there and all that. 
Plus, I'll be able to kind of compare and see what looks the best and how many coats I'll end up putting on and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to work with this test piece for a day on and off, you know, because this stuff dries quick, so you can go pretty quick with it. But I'm going to do my test piece, try it out, see how it looks. If it works, great. I'll do it on the car. And I'll kind of maybe time lapse show that quick doing it on the car. And I also want to make sure how these are spraying and make sure I get that down. If I need to make a note of how much to thin down something to get it to spray good but not too thick. and Because it could have, I don't want, I want to be able to spray as light as possible and, and cover without having a big build up of paint. You know, because then it's going to take a ton of clear coat to try to level it out and all that. I'll probably never get it perfectly level, but you know, to where it's no biggie. So light coats of paint is going to be the key. So I'll, I'll probably have to play around with ratios trying to get it to spray good. And that's where I'm at on that. It's a little on the thick side, but let's try to spray it really light. Just dust it. You know, I can really pour it on if I want, but that's a nice thing about the double action. You can, you can pull back on it a little and not get so heavy. So I'm just going to do light coats. Try to spray straight down rather than try, you know, spraying too hard up under the tape like that, but shouldn't be a problem. You can, you can kind of test on the tape and then work your way onto the, where you're spraying like that. Nice even coats, don't try not to just spray past the piece. Just lightly build up. And uh, I'm just, you can just spray, push down and put, push air out. You kind of blow on it. You just want to spray, you don't want to, you start seeing wet, start seeing real wet areas with this acrylic paint, you then stop, let it dry, um, and then you go back. And it starts building up and getting wet, and then stop, you know. And uh, so far it's going on pretty smooth. No spattering. And that's, uh, doesn't take long. That's a pretty solid coat of black right there. And I'm going to leave it with that. Now, something I mentioned, anybody that's been watching my last few videos, where I was spraying the interior and I've been spraying with the airbrush and spraying these Model Master paints. Um, have you noticed something? Not once have I had a problem with tip dry. Why is that? Because I'm using the right thinner, okay? 
Uh, I've seen people complain and complain and complain about, oh, the tip dry, oh, it's just horrible and this and that. How much you want to bet they're using alcohol, Windex, and stuff like that to instead of buying the actual thinner? This is kind of a mini rant, but I'm serious here. This is proof in the pudding. I have sprayed a ton of paint. I have sprayed several, several bowls full of paint in these last videos. And I ain't cut the video or nothing. And not one time have I had to stop and, and clean the tip off because it, it clogged up and was not spraying or spitting or whatever. Use the right, mix the paint really good. That's key number one, which I mentioned in my very first video of painting this. Got to mix it good. You can't shake it. Plus that creates bubbles if you're trying to brush paint it. Then you're going to have a bunch of bubbles in your paint if you shake it too much. Two, stirring it just ain't, ain't enough. It don't do it. I've tried it. Believe me, I've been using these paints a while and it just don't work. These mixers, the Badger mixer you can get for like $8, $10. And if you're really crafty, you can go to these like dollar places and get a thing exactly like this except it's called a drink mixer and it has like a little spring and something on the end of it and you can pop that spring off and you've got yourself a mixer for like a couple dollars. That's all it costs. It is worth it's weight in gold with these paints, you know, or honestly with any paint that you got to mix. I mean, you can't go wrong. It's not, you can't mix it better than you can mix with this. There's just no better. So, eh, a little, little mini rant, but I just wanted to point that out. Um, read a lot about people having tip dry, tip dry, tip dry. I ain't had it once <laughs> so far. I ain't saying it doesn't happen now and then, but it's very far and few between. Once you know the color, once you mix it properly, you use your right thinners, you know the right ratios, you get your spraying going right, tip dry becomes less and less and less of an issue. So don't, don't be scared about tip dry. It's just a natural thing with acrylic paints. I mean, it's just the nature of them. But you can minimize it so much by just getting your ratio right, cleaning your tip occasionally is no big deal. You know, just take a, a damp Q-tip and swab it and, you're, and keep going. So anyway, I'm going to let this go. Let it kind of dry for a little while, um, and I will probably, uh, well, I'll just let this dry and then I'll just show from there.